Hi, this is Bob Brown, and this video is uh, part four in the Standing Rock Sioux uh, protest against the pipeline and the oil. And this has introduced this book to you, uh, The Necessary Revolution. It's uh, Peter Singe, and the other authors are Brian Smith, Nina Krishwitz, Joe Lahr, and Sarah Shiley. Uh, technical note on a lot of these textbooks, I usually will spiral bound them. They're a lot easier to use that way. Uh, this was a tip from a fellow Walden University student who works for NASA, and that's what NASA does. They spiral bound all their books. It's a lot easier uh, to handle. Just a technical note on that. But in The Necessary Revolution, uh, Chapter 7 is what, and this is the Chapter 7 of this book is entitled The Unconventional Allies, Coke as in Coca-Cola, and the World Wild Wildlife Partnership, which is very interesting. Every Christmas, and this video is right after Thanksgiving, Coca-Cola is one of its big advertising symbols are the, the mother and baby polar bears. And so it's kind of interesting that how a marketing, a very successful marketing uh, method for Coke has kind of drawn the Coca-Cola company, maybe unwittingly, maybe they didn't realize it, but that marketing, that symbol, and I keep pointing out this, concept of post-factual, meaning that these ideas can somehow take a life of their own, and they, they can sometimes overshadow just the facts. And I think that's the difference between quantitative thinking and qualitative thinking. But anyway, in the chapter 7, uh, it states that the chairman E. Neville, eyes of Coca-Cola in 2007, he says, quote, we should not cause more water to be removed from a watershed than we replenish. On page 79, the World Health Organization estimates that in 2025, which is not that far away, some 4 billion people, almost half the global population, will be living in areas that will be severely water stressed. 4 billion people. Oh, you know, 4 billion people won't have enough water. So you see right there, the Standing Rock Sioux are bringing up a very important point. Water is the most critical resource on this planet, fresh water. Without fresh water, everything is unsustainable. So they're bringing up a very valid point. If you destroy this water and ecosystem, it could have catastrophic consequences. And there's no way that you as a business have the resources and funding to take, to take full responsibility for the, the disaster you unleash. If you think about the Deepwater Horizon tragedy, British Petroleum, the, this, when the, the oil rig exploded in the Gulf of Mexico, it caused untold damage. So from the World Health Organization, the report notes, the arithmetic of water still does not up. In the next two decades, it is estimated that water use by humans will increase by about 40%, and that 17% more water will be needed to grow food for a growing population. In addition, the water demand for an industry and energy will increase rapidly. So, and Coca-Cola, of course, needs water. If you Coke is mostly water. Um, and so I think this is a valid point that's getting missed in this. What the Standing Rock Sioux, the millennial people, uh, students, uh, the I don't want to call them protesters. These are people asserting their rights. I don't know the right term. Maybe I'll, someone can think of it. But they're not really protesters. These are people asserting basic human rights. And this is where we have a conflict between business and this. And, and, and as a business, business people, we cannot, be in this, we cannot be at this position where we're in a conflict with, with our customers or the environment or people in general. And the, as you read right there, the most valuable resource is not oil. The more valuable resource is water. And the Standing Sioux are actually making a better business case. They're saying water is more valuable than oil. And it's true. So you're trying to run your resource through here. You may destroy a much more valuable, much more vital resource. And you're not giving me any uh, assurances that you know what you're doing. So... As I keep saying, this project is probably doomed. Financially, it's probably doomed. Because with the shale oil 
discovery in Texas, there's simply no way that this is still going to be that profitable. It'll, it'll have some profit, but it's profitability. It, I mean, I'm just guessing, but it had to drop 40 to 60% since the onset. And you wonder how people don't take this into account. I think they don't, they don't read things like Peter Singe. You have to have a systems approach. So as a business person, when you're dealing with a complex situation like tribal law, a different culture, the millennial upheaval of people saying, hey, we're not going to let you destroy our future just for you know, short-term profit. I would highly recommend this book by Peter Singe or his work, Systems Thinking, so that when you approach any project that, it can, in, that could impact people's lives, from outsourcing jobs to insourcing jobs to impact on the environment, think about it systematically. How can you do it better? And if you can get everyone on your side, it's simple. You're going to be more profitable. If you have to fight in court like these companies are for the next 30 years, there is no profitability in this. And with the recent tragedies that have taken place, the water canning, the New York City student whose arm was blown off, I mean, the, the business and government has lost all credibility with these people. These are your customers. Ultimately, they're customers. As I said before in other videos, businesses exist to solve problems. As a business person, our job, from if you have a small lawn care business to a pet care business to a multinational corporation, at the end of the day, the, the job is solving problems for people. It's, it's all about human. It's, there's only the human dimension. And what I mean by that is, if you're, even if you're a veterinarian, you're, you're solving a person's problem with their pet. So if you're, an, if you're, a, an, a, if you're an antagonistic towards people, you, you, you're, not, you're not a business anymore. You, you may be turning into a cult, an ideology, um, some type of philosophy you're going to force down other people's throats. But at the end of the day, business people need to realize, I'm here to solve a problem. What is the problem? Well, we want oil, we want energy, we want to transport it. Well, the problem is the Lakota have a legitimate uh, com concern because the water resource they have is extremely valuable. And as, as time goes on, it's going to become more and more valuable. I live in Indiana. Indiana, we don't think of it, is part of the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes of North America are the greatest water, freshwater resource in the world. It is we in the Great Lakes region, including you know the, the rivers and tributaries, the Canadians, our Canadian neighbors on the north, we're sitting on probably the most valuable property in, in the world, the Great Lakes. They have to be protected because the world will ultimately depend on the Great Lakes for survival. Enron, in its time, tried to build pipelines to the Great Lakes. Unfortunately, that was blocked because it would destroy the entire ecosystem. But the Lakota and the Millennials have shown us that water is a fantastic resource that we have to protect. But from a business standpoint, getting fresh water from these regions, preserving it, capturing it, collecting it, transporting it, it means jobs. It means thousands and thousands of jobs because 4 billion people, 4 billion people by 2025, according to the World Health Organization, will not have enough water. 4 billion. That's 4 billion customers. They're human beings. I, but I'm, from a business standpoint, that's 4 billion customers. That's an unbelievable market. The Standing Rock people are showing us if we think differently, if we, like Singe, Peter Singe, we have systems thinking approach, there's an enormous potential to do good, enormous potential for a financial resource. It's a win-win for everyone. But by someone else saying, well, my needs are greater, I, and they destroy a, a, more, a, a, a more valuable resource, that's what, in my opinion, from a business standpoint, that's a very, very legitimate complaint that the Standing Rock people have. You're saying you're taking our resource, putting it at great risk, you're not going to really compensate us for that risk, and we see a future that if we preserve our way of life, if we preserve our environment, that we have a, we we can give more to the world. So that that's just basically I wanted to introduce this book, you know, and the Peter work of Peter Singe. I'm a very big follower of Peter Singe's thought. Systematic thinking's approach here. 
it's a way it's a different way of thinking and the Lakota and the and the millennial people are trying to show us think differently as a business don't just think this way business people are too often locked into one way of thinking by works like Singhi and others Michael Porter and his work from Harvard see things differently and I think you can see in the long term if we if we work with them and help the Lakota people expand what they have they can export that to the world and not just the water but their philosophy of life the way they can are have a more sustainable life and their culture so I hope this has been some help again once again I highly recommend the necessary revolution Peter Singe and a collection of uh, scholars any of the work of Peter Singe he's on YouTube highly recommend it and I, I'd ask business people or people who are in opposition to the Standing Rock people think differently see that that resource that they are trying to protect in fact is thousands of times more valuable than the oil that could potentially damage it thank you